Sup Gloomers, Alice from Rage Magic Gaming here, and we're going to be doing a video on the most difficult scenarios in Gloomhaven. With the release of Gloomhaven Digital now having the full campaign, everyone's now able to experience the, all of the scenarios that Gloomhaven has to offer, and some of them are really hard, so let's just dive into that now. Spoiler warning, we'll be revealing the contents of several scenarios. You have been warned. Scenario 95, Payment Due. This scenario is written by guest designer Travis Chance, and holy shit, so this scenario is particularly annoying. You have to split the party into two separate rooms, one of which is full entirely with difficult terrain, and it damages you every time you end your turn there, and another one that's full with deep terrors, obstacles, and traps. Meanwhile, you have to deal with the fact that there's an annoying locked door, the infinitely spawning demons, and then a Lusavis at the end who can just make the scenario even more annoying. Ultimately though, it's not surprised that so many people consider this to be a difficult scenario, but it doesn't often get, you know, a play because it's such, it, 95 is such a far off side scenario that a lot of people haven't get, I think that this one's definitely one of the harder ones and a lot of people really struggle. Plus it spawned this meme from our group because really this describes the scenario just in one sentence. Scenario 33, the Savas Armory. So not only is this scenario full of really annoying demons, which are, <laughs> very, I mean, they are, demons are some of the most annoying things in the game, but then you have Savas, who then spawn more demons. And not only that, but you don't have just a couple Savas, you have loads of it. For example, one of the first rooms you encounter has four of them. So it's a very high chance they start spawning more demons instantly. Not only that, but you have to get to the final room, loot a bunch of chests, and then everyone has to get out. If anyone exhausts on a hex that isn't the starting tile, Everyone loses. So not only that, this makes the scenario very easy to lose just of one player. Because sometimes in other scenarios, you can have like, well, you know, they exhausted, but the rest of us can, you know, carry the rest of the way. This scenario literally ends it instantly. Boom, you lose, done. Makes it very hard to get in and out. So with the most annoying enemies, it definitely deserves a spot on the top. Scenario 60, Alchemy Lab. So much like the previous scenario, you have to run in, get some stuff and get out. However, this scenario has a time limit. Starting with the seventh round, everyone starts taking two damage every turn. Not like attack two and you can block it with shields, just straight up suffer two damage every round. Then at the end of the 12th round, the whole thing collapses. If you haven't done it by then, everyone loses, yay! So not only that, but it's a long scenario with plenty of tiles, annoying enemies, and there's things where you have to get in and out, it makes it a very rough scenario that adding the time limit really makes it that much more difficult. If you didn't have the time limit, I think the two damage could possibly be manageable, but ultimately so many people have had a lot of struggles. You'll actually see on Board Game Geek, the amount of people say, help, I need help with this scenario. Alchemy Lab, you're pretty brutal. Scenario 18, the Abandoned Sewers. This one definitely deserves its reputation just because of oozes. There's a lot of scenarios that have oozes, but the ones that have them in particularly annoying volumes tend to get a bit of a worse reputation. Uh, the Abandoned Sewers is a long one, featuring a big narrow uh, line on top, a big narrow line on the side, and then this big room at the end. And there's a shitload of oozes at the back, which may spawn more oozes. It's very easy to quickly end up with eight oozes in the final room that you need to mop up. With all the enemies that have, are able to poison you through this dungeon, which you kind of have to constantly heal off to stay alive, and the fact that there's these narrow corridors and lots of difficult terrain have made this scenario very difficult. Not only that, but you encounter it at a low level. Uh, it's very easy to unlock this pretty early and you'll be very ill prepared for it. So um, it's, it's just one of those scenarios that I've seen so many people fail. Not only that, but through both our campaigns, we got dangerously close to failing on both times. It's even with particularly strong groups. Scenario 48, the Shadow Wield. So this scenario usually is done where people have loads of equipment, high prosperity, and you think we can kill this boss in no time. But the thing is, if you're the, the this this boss requires, it demands coordination because every time it makes a melee attack, it disappears and it's not targetable. So it can appear, move, hit, and disappear before you have a chance to do anything. So a lot of groups are like, how do we deal with this? Well, the answer is pretty simple. You have to initiative weave and you have to talk to each other. And some people just struggle with that. But that's just the boss. This scenario also has demons that immobilize you, harrowers that just 
go very early in initiative kicking your ass and then you have imps that are cursing you the whole time. So you have to contend with all this with a vanishing boss that has six different points it can spawn at? Like, good luck. So many people have had trouble with this. And not only that, it's got a reputation. Even Marcel did a bonus scenario where you get to play as the guy. It's such a fun scenario too, but it's uh, particularly rough. A lot of people tend to uh, complain about this on Board Game Geek and Reddit. Scenario 28, Outer Ritual Chamber. So, you get living corpses, which are normally kiteable, except they start like two inches from your face and they have a higher level. So normally you're like, well, they hit hard and have a high health pool, but they're so far away. They're not far away. They're in your face immediately and they're a high level. So you're like, well, we'll just deal with that and move on. But the thing is you have like, it depends on your difficulty, you can have six cultists, six elite cultists, like right off the bat, depending if you're in a two, three or four player. But then, so you're like, well, we have to deal with those so they don't spawn living bones. It's very easy at the start, at the end of the first round to actually have 15 enemies in your face in this very small starting tile. And that can happen relatively quickly. And you think, man, that's pretty rough. Yeah, and that's the scenario. And you still have two other rooms that you need to explore. So even if you get past the first room, you might actually exhaust yourself of resources before dealing with literally two rooms full of demons. This definitely has a, it's, it's a scenario that can be pretty swingy because depending on how you've shuffled the cards, it may not be hard, but it may be impossible. So we have to give it a mention just because the, uh, uh, at scenario 28 shuffled the wrong way is even with the best group is just a loss. Scenario 38, the slave pens. This normally wouldn't be an awful scenario. It's not weighted particularly hard. There's a chest that's kind of annoyingly off on the side, but you can just jump over it and get it. And ultimately, it doesn't have too many enemies outside of the annoying Inox that are constantly, you know, destroying you. So you're like, oh, so what's the problem here? Well, you have to protect Redthorn. It's an escort quest. Who hates escort quests? Now, here's the thing. You can't control them. He is a suicidal maniac who runs three hexes towards the end goal every turn. So you spend most of the scenario trying to figure out creative ways to block him off rather than actually fighting enemies because he's going to run in and he can open doors. So if you're like, we're not ready, I'm not running in. And not only that, he ends up being the focus, he dies, and when he dies, everyone loses. What an annoying scenario. So yeah, um, that's just a bitch. So, so many people not end up losing the scenario because they die. They're like, hey, Redthorn died. How do I beat the scenario? Uh, here's the thing. It's basically like, hey, bring a Cragheart and put obstacles and make a maze for him to run around. <laughs> That's the best strategy. So let's do honorable mentions now. Scenario 31, the Plane of Night. This one has annoying enemies and night demons and black imps. And then the final room has a big pillar filled with lots of health that you have to destroy. And then you can you think, oh, let's clean up with the enemies and then destroy the pillar. Except you get an enemy spawning every round. An annoying night demon makes it very annoying. Scenario 76 by Matthew G. Somers. Uh, so you not only have seven tiles to get through because you have to reveal every hex and destroy all enemies, all the doors are not openable. You have to do damage. So you have to fight doors, fight enemies, open up seven tiles, and then there's really annoying enemies because you have lots of harrowers in here. So you have curses and poisons to deal with. And not only that, but the reward for the scenario is just an encrypted message. Scenario 52 by Marcel Sertechka. So this one is in another annoying scenario where one person failing makes everyone fail. You literally split your whole group up and you have to take care of your own wing. Your Twitch, some people are like, hey, I got this. But some classes are just not meant to handle things alone. And if one person exhausts before they've looted their tile, everyone loses. Scenario 26, Ancient Cistern. This is one that's actually pretty annoying at the end. It's really only the final room, but you can actually have a couple ways to cheese it. However, it's still filled with annoying enemies because black imps suck. And I mean, let's, let's be real here. The Ancient Cistern, once you get it, you have to get adjacent to those pipes and then lose, spend actions to do nothing just to win the scenario in a particularly brutal room. That room alone is, makes it worth a mention. And finally, you probably guessed it, Scenario 72, The Oozing Grove. This scenario has earned a reputation in the Gloomhaven community as one of the most brutal scenarios in the game. Because sometimes people are like, well, we can deal with the oozes because they'll split and they'll lose health. But what if the scenario has oozes that split and then oozes that just spawn straight up at full health? 
every turn until you start destroying obstacles. So you're like, well, let's prioritize the obstacles. That's great, but then you have imps that are literally throwing curses and possibly curses and poisons in your deck or healing those imps that just constantly split. It ends up being a scenario that, con that, that it's, it's so, so horribly balanced. Matthew G. Somers does another guest design, and he has a history of writing some very difficult scenarios, but this one is by far the hardest. Um, just because the whole scenario is revealed at the start. So you have three tiles full of enemies, and they're not small tiles either. And then you have high health trees constantly spawning oozes. Many people, even our groups, have had multiple failures on this, and it's not surprising. Even on some like <laughs> polls on Board Game Geek, you can see that an overwhelming amount of people said this is the most difficult scenario, and I'm not surprised at all. So which scenarios did you struggle with most? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked the video, be sure to hit like and subscribe for more content. We'll be actually releasing more Frosthaven guides coming up soon and doing more Gloomhaven digital content. A special thanks to our Inox tier patrons who are so amazing. Thank you for supporting the channel. You're awesome. And thanks to all of you for watching.